All right, all right, all right. My name is Chris Bonner, and my report is on the book Please Kill Me by Legs McNeil and Jillian McCain. The 80s in America was a time of decadence, economic prosperity, and up until the stock market crashed in 1987, immense financial growth. In a sense, the 80s can be summarized in one word, more. Everyone began to ascertain that they both wanted and deserved more. More money, more possessions, more happiness. More became an emotion in the 80s. And more is precisely the word that I would use to describe my emotions towards please kill me. It left me wanting more. Thus, I would argue that please kill me would be a poor supplement to National Geographic's program, the 80s, the decade that made us due to critical flaws in both story, voice, and sheer 80s material in general. Lakes McNeil and Jillian McCain are the listed authors for Please Kill Me. While they may have put the book together and pieced together interviews, they can hardly be classified as authors. The amount of excerpts they provided is minuscule. The listed authors that should have been in this book, Iggy Pop and Friends. There is no continuity in voice whatsoever, which makes it incredibly difficult for the reader to have any flow to the story. The story itself is a garbled montage of junkies recounting their drugs, incestuous sexual endeavors with bandmates and other scenesters. And oh yeah, there's a little bit of music. Similar books, such as The Dirt, Confessions of the World's Most Notorious Rock Band, which follows Motley Crue, follows a similar format stylistically and in voice. However, the glaring difference between the dirt and Please Kill Me is that the story follows a continuous stream of consciousness, and the voices are limited to the four members of the band, each being unique. The dirt succeeds immensely as a timepiece in the decade it covers, which brings me to my final point. The most emphatic fallacy with this book can be summed up in sheer statistical analysis. It covers 445 pages of source material, and its portion covering the 80s doesn't even begin until page 415. That's a total of 6% that actually covers events in the 80s. In conclusion, based on its confusing layout, lack of any linear storytelling, and most egregiously, its lack of material from the 80s in general. I could not, under any circumstance, recommend that this book be submitted as a comprehensive account of an entire decade.